In this video, I will show you how you can do a hypothesis test using the t-statistic. Let's start with the definition of the t-statistic. The t-statistic is equal to x-bar, which is our estimated mean, minus mu over s over square root of n, and is approximately student t distributed with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, what are all these values? x-bar is the estimated mean, mu is some value I want to test, s is the estimated standard deviation, and square root of n is the square root of the numbers of observations I have. How does this hypothesis test now work? So let's assume we have the following initial hypothesis. Our H0, which is our null hypothesis, let that be mu is less than or equal to, say, 80. So you want to test if the x bar that we estimated so the mean we estimated is sufficiently close to mu such that it is still very likely that mu is less than or equal to 80. So the true mean is still less than or equal to 80. So how, how does this work? So what do we do? Okay, let's assume we take data and it has the following distribution, okay? This is the distribution we assume. Now I have the standard deviation of this distribution s, that's no problem, and I assume its true mean is mu. So its true mean is mu. Now the question is, how far away from this mu is the actual measured mean? For example, let's assume it's here. So the probability of being out here is the probability of being at this point or further to the left which is the area under this bell-shaped curve to the left of this value. Okay, we could also test it on the other side, or we could test it symmetric how far away it is. This hypothesis here, we need to attach a threshold. And the threshold is saying, okay, if the probability of the event we found here, our x-bar, is too small if I assume the true mean of mu, then I will reject this hypothesis. A common, uh, common threshold people take is 5%. So alpha equals 5%. What does that mean? Well, that means if I look here, I estimated my x-bar, and I will see that the area to the left of this dashed line is 5%. Okay? So if the area under the curve to the left of this line is 5%, and my x-bar is within that 5% threshold, that means I have a probability of less than 5% to actually measure this x-bar if mu is the true mean. If these 5% is my threshold here, I would reject this hypothesis and state that, wait, no, mu is not less than or equal to 80, but the alternative hypothesis, mu is strictly greater than 80, has to be true. I could also do it with mu being equal to 80 or mu being greater than 80. So let's make a nice example, and I will use exactly this mu less than or equal to 80, and alpha equals 5%. Okay, let's look at test scores. Assume we have 64 students and they have an average score of 81 and we measure a standard deviation of 8. 
Okay? So we, 64 students, average score is 81, let's say out of 100. They have a standard deviation of 8, and we want to test how likely is it that the true mean is less than or equal to 80 at the 5% level. Okay? Or we want to test if it is possible for the mean to be less than or equal to 80, even though we measured 81 at the 5% level. So let's calculate our t-statistic. Our t-statistic is equal to x bar minus mu, 81 minus 80, over s over square root of n. S, 8, over square root of 64. Well, square root of 64 is 8. 8 over 8 is 1. On top we have 1, so we end up with 1. Okay. Now we have this value. Hmm. Now we need to compare that value to the threshold alpha 5% at the student t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom or 63 degrees of freedom. There is actually a simplification to this. We can use the standard normal distribution instead of the student t distribution. The first case where we can use the standard normal table instead of the student t is if n is large. Okay, what does n large mean? Well, let's say larger than 30. If we have more than 30 observations, then we can just use a standard normal table. This is satisfied here. The second possibility is if I know the true variance or true standard deviation of the draws I took, then I can use the standard normal table instead of the student t. Now, knowing the true variance is not that often the case, but it could be the case. If I roll a die plenty of times, I know, assuming it's a fair die, the standard deviation. Okay, so we have satisfied the case that we have this, uh, enough students for us to take the standard normal table instead of student t table. At the same time, what's the difference between the standard normal and the t uh, student t distribution? Well, if n becomes really large, they're the same. If n is small, the student t distribution has fatter tails. What does that mean? Here, the density on the tails is higher than the normal distribution, and that means that here around the mean, the density will be lower with the student t distribution. And as larger as m becomes, it will get closer and closer and closer to the standard normal t distribution, which means the tails become lower and the mean goes, or the density around the mean goes a little bit up to compensate. Okay, so what is this 5% threshold for a standard normal, in the standard normal table? Well, this threshold is 1.645. Meaning, if the value I get from the t-statistic is larger than 1.645, then I will have a rejection of this hypothesis. Well, let's look. We get a value of 1. So this is the alpha value, 6, 1.645. Right, and we want to look, this will be 5% of our density, this area in here. And if it turns out that our t-statistic, which we calculated here, gives us a value in this area, we would reject the hypothesis that this mu is less than or equal to 80. Now it turns out the value of 1 is obviously closer to 0, which is our mean here because it's a standard normal table, right? 
this is 1, so we're not in this top 5%, and so we cannot reject this hypothesis.